Psalms 46 to the chief musician for the sons of Korah, a song upon Alam. The Psalms about a psalm of trouble. Like nobody knew what that was. And in trouble, God is our refuge and our strength. A very present help in trouble. Now this psalm doesn't say it's David's psalm. But David writes about trouble because David knew about trouble. And I'm not saying this, this psalm is of David, but it sounds like David. But our troubles will be rest upon God. God knows what tomorrow is. We don't. Therefore we therefore will we therefore will not we fear though the earth be removed. And we know the earth is not going to be removed. Except for at the end of time, when death and hell give up the dead in them, there's going to be the great white throne judgment. <laughs> the Christians already been gathered together. And though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, and when he's saying, you know what, you know, we worry about things we shouldn't be worrying about. A lot of times our worry comes to no avail. That's what I've learned. And also we're looking at the second advent. <laughs> when Jesus Christ comes, he's going to level out this earth. And the only high place this earth is going to have is Jerusalem. And maybe God will move the earth because the earth will be without the curse. And the earth will be like it was in the Garden of Eden. Though the waters thereof roar and be troubled, storms at sea, troubles and problems, though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof, Selah. I told you that's a musical rest. It's also a reference to the second advent. There's a river, the streams whereof shall make glad the city of God, Jerusalem. The holy place of the tabernacle of the Most High. There's a tabernacle in the millennium. There's a tabernacle present when the writer's writing this. God is in the midst of her. That's where God dwelt. He dwelt in the, the most holy place. He dwelt at the mercy seat. Where only the high priest was to go in the day of atonement twice. It will be also where Jesus Christ sits in the millennium in the throne of David. She shall not be moved. Jerusalem. All right. Well, Jerusalem has been moved right now. We're, we're the area we're talking about right now. The dumb of the rock is. The Muslims are in charge. And the bordery lines of Israel has been moved for the Jordans. The border line has been moved for the Palestinians. The border line has been moved for peace by, by the, the Middle East. It's been moved by uh, the, the English. It's been moved by the uh, United Nations. But when Jesus Christ comes and sets that boundary line, and the boundary line is mentioned in the book of Ezekiel, and ain't, you ain't going to move it. But what he's saying was a time of trouble. We have a God that has everything in control. And if we're looking at a psalm of time of trouble, then we must be looking at a particular time. Everybody looks over is the fact is there's a time called Jacob's trouble. And what will end Jacob's trouble? The coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. You realize what's going to happen in Jerusalem? And there's a temple in the in the in Jerusalem, in the tribulation period, you know what's going to happen one day? Those Jews are going to wake up in the morning, and in the three and a half years, they're going to open up that temple, and there is going to be a man seated on that mercy seat. And he's going to say, I'm God. I'm the one. And Jews are now declared public enemy number one. Release all the prisoners out of jails and give me every Jewish man to kill. And if anybody who does not have that mark, you bring them before me to kill them too. Time of Jacob's trouble. 
God's in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. When Jesus Christ comes, God shall help her, the city, that right early, but in the right time according to what God has purpose. Jesus said something, the fact is, he said, except the times be shortened, even the very elect would be, would be, um, the very elect would be in uh, something. Can't get my thought. But he said those times have been, will be shortened. There's the early. Now, I don't know because I'm getting older. Everybody says as you get older, time gets short. Or if we're getting closer and closer to the time of the tribulation period where time probably will be shortened. Listen, it said, you know, if those days weren't short and no one would survive. The heathen rage. The, the goat nations, all the nations that won't help the Jews. The kingdoms were moved. When Jesus Christ comes, and he's going to plow through them. He uttered his voice. The earth melted. That's second advent. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Selah. Who's the God of Jacob? He came on his own. His own received him not. Jesus. Jesus is going to be the answer for the nation of Israel at the seventh year of Jacob's trouble. Come. Behold the works of the Lord. What desolations he has made in the earth. Destruction. You realize the, 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 the Bible says there's going to be, Ezekiel speaks about, there are going to be people going to walk through that land and they're going to put a sign or a, or a banner. Okay, here's a bone of a dead body. Somebody get over here and bury it. Armageddon. There's going to be great earthquakes in the tribulation period. And one great final earthquake. Just before Jesus comes, he just changes the whole earth. He breaketh, uh, no, he maketh war to cease. Well, gee, I wonder who's coming during the peace time. Jesus Christ. He maketh war to cease unto the end of the earth. Jesus is coming during peace time. He's going to cause the peace. He, Jerusalem's called the city of peace. Salam. Peace. Salam. He breaketh the bow. That's a military weapon. And cutteth the spear asunder. Military weapon. He burneth the chariots with, in the fire. Military transportation. Be still and know that I am God. The I am. That's Israel. That was God speaking to Moses in the book. God, what shall, what shall I tell them their name? They're going to ask me, what, what's your name? He says, you tell them I am. You know what angered the Jewish people the most when Jesus was here? When Jesus said, I am. It says the Bible, they took stones. They were going to stone him. And Jesus said, well, what good, well, what good works are you going to stone me for? He said, listen, it ain't for the good works as you declared yourself to be God. Jehovah Witnesses haven't got that. I, God, will be exalted among the heathen. Jesus Christ. That's the goat and the sheep nation. The goat nation, <laughs> here comes God, here comes Jesus. You're gone, you're wiped out. The sheep nation, thank you for taking care of my people. I am God Almighty. I'm going to let you come into millennium, and they're going to have to worship Jesus. You'll be praising Jesus for helping the Jews who they didn't know what they were doing for allowing them into the millennium. I will be exalted in the earth. Millennium. The Lord of hosts is with us. Israel. Because look, the God of Jacob is our refuge. Selah. It's a time of trouble. Jacob's trouble. 
It's a time of the relief of Jacob's trouble. And who is the release of, Je of Jacob's trouble? Jesus Christ. The moment that Jesus Christ comes back and picks up that raiment of Jews, that's it. The nation of Israel is back together in the apple of God's eye, and they'll never be departed. They'll never be separated. They'll never be against that, that, that opposition that God and the Jewish people will ever never have that again. Right now, they're put off to the side. Right now, they're, they're in the stumbling block. Right now, they're the enemies of the gospel. It's dealing with an individual Jew to get saved. But corporately, when Jesus Christ comes, there's the end of troubles.